So I was actually thinking of changing my outfit so it seems like it's like a new day or something. But I thought about it and I'm like, hopefully you guys don't mind that I'm wearing the same exact thing for three videos now. <laughs> because, yeah, I'm just too lazy to change. Okay, so for this video now, I wanted to share with you my labor and delivery birth story. Um, my labor and delivery story is not that um, dramatic, but here it goes. It was at 1 a.m. and I've been having Braxton Hicks for about like weeks now. So I'm pretty like, eh, it's probably Braxton Hicks, but damn, these kind of hurt, you know? So it was 1 a.m. and I was like, okay, kind of hurts. I'm gonna drink some water. So I drank a chug, I chugged a whole thing of water because water usually helps with stopping contractions. I'm not gonna go into the whole details of why, but it's supposed to stop it if it's not, if it's not real contractions. So I drank it, whole thing of water, didn't go away. Timed it in my head and it was, it felt like it was every two to five minutes apart. So now it's 3 a.m. and I've been feeling them and I can't go to sleep, right? And I'm like, damn, these really, they really hurt. And so like at 3 a.m., that's when I kind of propped up and I was like, Bobby, wake up. I, th I think it's happening. And he goes, oh. And then I was 37 weeks, you know? And it's our first baby. Usually it's like you go past 40 weeks even sometimes, you know? And you already have to be induced. And so, uh, I was thinking in my head at that time, like, these freaking hurt. And I was like, Bobby, can you time them for me? He times them and they're actually two to three minutes apart. And, uh, I was like, damn. It's like, okay. I was like, okay, I'm going to shit shower and shave just in case I go into labor. I didn't know I was in labor. And so I took a shit. I shaved and I showered and now Bobby says, oh, it's every two minutes apart. And I was like, oh yeah, they feel like they're every two minutes apart, all right. I come out of the shower and I looked at the clock and it was around 3.30 and that day I was supposed to hike with my one of my really, really close coworkers, her name is Sandy, and I was going to hike with her that day, the day before. I was eating breakfast with her and drank seven leaves. <laughs> and uh, I looked at the clock, I looked at Bobby, I looked at the outside, I was like, it's too early for this. So I decided I'm gonna try to sleep it off. I did not wanna go into labor and delivery with clothes thick and high, basically not in labor. So I decided just like, I will wait it off a little bit. It's our first baby, nothing's gonna come out that fast. So I went back to bed and I was grimacing the whole time because every two minutes, like at the two minute mark, I was about to fall asleep, you know, and then I would wake back up because the pain was so intense. So I was like, <sighs> like breathing through it. Is it? It's 5.30 a.m. I've been feeling contractions since 12.55. Um and it, it hurts it, it's been hurting and i really wanted my co-workers to check me but it's the middle of the night they're all sleeping so i didn't want to bother them so i think i'm gonna go to the hospital but i don't want to like get triage and then go home and then i'm just a little girl and i'm like closed you know so either way I'm gonna wait for Sandy. I think I'm gonna call her and see if she can possibly check me. But Bobby's taking out cereal right now. I took a shower, put some deodorant on. Um, and yeah, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna head to the hospital. I don't know. And. Uh, I was supposed to hike with Sandy at like 6 a.m. I was supposed to be at her house at 6 a.m. or something like that. 
so I knew that she was gonna be awake soon because by the time it was five o'clock that's when I was like Bobby I think I have to go we have to go to the hospital like I, I can't and so he goes okay should I take out cereal which is our dog and I was like yeah yeah that's a good idea and so he took out the dog I was like I think I need a shit again and so I went to her heard his name he's about to come in now a little closer <laughs> and so I, I I pooped and when I wiped there was blood now and now that's what we call bloody show and I was like okay let's just go to the hospital for sure I felt like I was confirmed you know and so um, I texted Sandy and I told her I think I'm I, I don't remember exactly what I said but I told her something along the lines of it really hurts I think I'm contracting every two minutes something blah 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 and at 5 30 she calls me and she says i'm coming over i'm gonna check how dilated you are and i was like you know what it's okay she's on the way to the hospital so i'm like i'm gonna come to you instead she had these beautiful stairs that i had to walk up to by the time i got to her house and she checked me and i was only one centimeter dilated but to be fair i was um i think i was like at that time 90 percent effaced or something like, which means my cervix is pretty much like thinned out and then also my baby was not high and so every time I was contracting because the cervix was so thin I felt the pain a lot and his head wasn't high so it was pushing down here and it was really painful it wasn't back labor it was all like lower belly pain and so which is a good thing you know you don't want back pain because that means he's OP or he's posterior and you don't want that because that means your baby's like looking this way sunny side up and that takes a lot longer to push and so uh you know we were like if i was not the patient and i was a nurse i'll also feel like you know it's your one you can walk around blah 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 i would probably kind of recommend the same thing as most nurses will recommend because you're only one centimeter dilated we don't have a history of how my labor story or how my labor is yet so you really can't assume or guess what to do because you don't have a history and so and so bobby didn't feel comfortable having me back home because it was a weekday that day and there was a lot of traffic going up to the hospital going west mm -hmm. So we went to the hospital and I was breathing through my contractions like crazy and I was like oh. I was just like I remember the pain so much it's like a period at that time when I was going to the hospital it felt like um, a period cramp that's a hundred times worse that's what it felt like went to the hospital 30 minutes later um, and now it's about 7.30 a.m. and I was three centimeters dilated I'm going believe it or not this is really fast for a first time pregnancy first time labor first time mom okay um, so I was three now a hundred percent you face and baby's even lower so I told my nurse like give me the epidural I know you don't have my blood yet here's my prenatals my platelets are fine just give it to me about 30 minutes later you know after you know you have to give the nurses time to kind of um, call the doctor get everything ready I get that part you know so I did that I waited for her 30 minutes was really fast and so she moved me to a different room to labor now it was a triage room that I was in and I was in the labor room and she we started the IV she hydrated me contractions didn't go away because they're actually labor contractions I was contracting every two minutes and by the time it was um, 9 o'clock, my water broke now. I didn't have the epidural yet. And holy shit, my, my pain now was like... I, if I can recall the pain, I think it was like a... Maybe like a 7 out of 10. Like it was so freaking painful. The water broke just naturally at 9. 9.05 exactly, I remember. Um, and then 30 minutes later, because the doctor was actually doing an epidural for a different patient at that time, and so she was first, so I had to wait for him to be done before he went to me, which is fine, you know, that happens all the time. And so this specific anesthesiologist is very, very generous with his epidurals, and usually his epidurals makes the patient, like, frozen, okay? I was able to move still. And I'll tell you exactly why. 
um, if the title didn't already give it away. And so, um, I was able, I, I actually, okay, what was it? I'm getting distracted because he's kind of like squirmy right now. Okay, so by the time I got the epidural, it was around 9.30 and when my nurse checked me, I was five now. So she was like, okay, good, you're making progress. I was finally comfortable. I was really happy. I was laying down sleeping. I was just, here's a picture of it, of, of my husband brushing my hair. Like, I was really excited. And it didn't even feel like three hours nap because that's how happy I got an epidural. No regrets. This for my mom. <laughs> what? A couple of days ago, my mom was talking to Maggie's mom. Mm -hmm. And she said, and they were passively telling me not to get an epidural. They were like, they were like, oh, I heard if you get the epidural, you're gonna have back pain in the future. You don't feel it now, but when you're old, blah 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 blah. But they were talking to each other about it. But they made sure like I heard it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like passively telling me not to get it. I have no regrets. <laughs> Nothing. It's pain free now. I don't even know I'm having a contraction. I just can't move my legs. I'm just having the shakes now, but it's all part of labor. Yeah. Later, he's gonna be born. Mm -hmm. He's ready. He's ready. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I came to the hospital now. Yeah, we got some good timing. Hmm? That was like good, perfect timing. For real? And we didn't come any earlier. What do you mean? But it was still painful in the morning. Oh, it's so painful when you fell asleep. <laughs> huh? When you fell asleep. Oh. Um, I was like, okay, maybe I can try to sleep it off. You know? Mm-hmm. And then I was like, mm-mm. Every time I tried to fall asleep, the contractions were happening. Like, every two minutes. And then it got worse is, and worse. Is it cold? It's not, it's just, it's just labor. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I, I know what's normal. <laughs> but three hours later, around like 12 a.m., my, my nurse came in and she, she saw me grimacing. I didn't call her because I thought that, you know, it's not too bad. It was not as bad as, but it got worse and worse. So I was grimacing again and it felt like the pain that I felt in the car now, but a little bit worse. And so I was like, she's like jenny are you okay and then i was like i'm really feeling it and then she goes oh okay and so she checked me and i was eight now and um and i felt everything and even with the epidural so that means it probably means that my body metabolizes epidurals quickly but also because bc's awake You want to be in the story too? Good. And he has hiccups now. Shh. Okay, so then I was eight centimeters dilated. And so um, baby was low again. And um, I ended up getting like an extra boost of an epidural, uh, which is called like a little bolus or like a top off. Um, because I felt so much pain and my obviously these are my co-workers too and so she probably felt bad and she's like okay just give it to her um we don't really rec if, if I was 10 centimeters she probably wouldn't have given it to me but because I was still eight um she thought it was okay um and so I got it well didn't matter anyways in terms of like the pushing because at 10 centimeters which was about 30 minutes later, I was 10 centimeters now, and um, and uh, she, so she checked me, I was 10, and she called the doctor, and the doctor wanted me to kind of uh, wait it out um, and push at 3.30, and so I was okay with that because the epidural was finally kicking in, I was pretty comfortable, my coworkers were in the room distracting me and talking to me and so I felt really good. By the time it was 3.30, I started pushing and when I was pushing, um, I, I guess I pushed pretty well because um, I pushed for about 25 minutes and my nurse called the doctor and was like, 
hey, like, where are you? Jenny's ready, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but the doctor wasn't ready for me. So, um, so she came about an hour later. So I was still talking to my coworkers and Leon's head was basically just kind of there, you know? And, um, when the doctor came, I pushed with her for probably like five minutes or so. And then out came Leon, tiny little nugget thing. And, um, my placenta actually ended up uh, flying out of the doctor's chest. Like that's how fast it came out. Well, basically it turns out that, um, and I found this out from my OB in postpartum, that I was basically abrupting. So what that means is my placenta was already peeling off uh, when Leon was in there. That can be very, very, very dangerous, uh, which calls for a C-section if I wasn't already completely dilated. Because it means that the organ, which is the placenta, that crosses to give baby oxygen, nutrients, and all that stuff. Well, if it wasn't there anymore, then it cuts off his oxygen if he was still inside the womb. Um, and obviously it could be fatal. And so, uh, yeah, but because I guess like even with a little bit of an attachment was enough oxygen to oxygenate Leon, then it was okay. But... You know, throughout labor, I did hear baby's heart rate kind of drop and stuff. And, um, you know, working at L&D, you kind of know what's going on. But I, at the same time, I trusted my coworkers. And so I didn't, I trusted them so much that I wasn't worried. You know, I just felt like I was being really taken care of. And so I just kind of let them do their thing. So yeah, it turns out that I was abrupting. And that's why the placenta usually takes uh, about like 5 to 10, maybe 15 minutes for it to like, uh, come out through massaging and stuff, you know, uh, it's like delivering a second baby But mine just like came out in like seconds after Leah. So it was already like done It also turns out my uh, OB told me that she's really an amazing OB she When she pushed me through she pushed me in a way where it's like so I don't rip or tear that much So my recovery is good. So that's what happened. I only got a first degree laceration, which is a tiny little tiny little tear um and which now i don't even feel it anymore. I, I didn't feel it f since a week after i have no problems pooping i have no problems like it's as if i'm not even pregnant but i just but she did recommend me not to have sex you know at, at least until she see she sees me in the six week mark um so i'm following that but uh what was i saying oh it also turns out that i can only make small babies and so the reason why Leon was born at 37 weeks is because she said that my uterus is actually really small. So it can only accommodate so much. My placenta was really, really small. It was like the size of like a, like a regular size pancake. I'm not talking about the Denny's pancakes, you know. I'm talking about like an average size pancake. And so it was that small. And, um, that's, and Leon was small. And there was absolutely no more room for him to grow so that's why his head was low because there's just no space in there anymore he needed to come out to grow and so that's what happened so nothing too dramatic or anything but now i know that i'm not gonna work up until 36 weeks and three days next time uh and especially with my second pregnancy i'm probably gonna uh, i'm gonna be aware of all of this history stuff so i'm gonna be off sooner uh, I'm not going to strain myself so much. And also because something has came down there before. Um, the muscles are not as strong. So usually the labor is even faster. So all in all though, overall I had a really good labor and delivery story. I think the birth story was... It's, it's really honestly nothing more I can ask for because everyone was safe and Leon was safe and we made it to the hospital and so everything turned out really good. I guess like in a way I should have been a little bit more careful because my mom has a history of a fast labor but she told me that I was term. Leon is term too but like you know like late term like at least 39 weeks 40 weeks or so you know. And so, I just didn't expect him to come out so soon. Um, but other than that, that was my birth story. Nothing too dramatic. But I guess the most 
scariest part was because I was abrupting and that could have been something else but it wasn't so I'm really grateful for that but um, other than that um, that is my birth story I hope you guys enjoyed it and um, I will see you guys next time on my next video hopefully with a different outfit <laughs> bye bye guys